Hi, this is Needlepointers.com and today I'd like to show you how to make these cute Easter frames. They are made with an inexpensive wooden frame and they come together pretty quickly. You just have to wait a little while for the Mod Podge to dry. So let's get started on this project. For this project you will need a wooden frame. You will need Mod Podge, neither gloss or flat base. You will also need some scrapbook paper. You will need a exacto knife, a ruler, pencil, scissors, some sharpie markers, and a foam or regular brush. You will also need some freezer paper for protecting your workspace and keeping it from sticking and also a piece of cardboard and some paper towels. If you would like to see a step-by-step -step instructions and a photo tutorial of this project or to purchase any of the supplies for this project, please visit our website by clicking the iCard or the link in the description of the video. To start the project, you'll need to pick out your from your scrapbook paper some scrapbook to, paper to put onto your frame. This uh, stack of paper we found has is year-round and it has many different holidays and times of year and lots of different scrapbook pages. So we thought this would be a nice one to buy because we can do projects for year-round. This is the page that I used to make my first frame. This frame I used this whole page and I ended up cutting it in several places to piece it together around the frame. I haven't decided totally if I like this look or not because you can see a lot of the, the edges where I pieced it together. But I think after I put a couple more coats of Mod Podge on here it may blend in a little bit better. So we'll see at the end of the project how this turned out. I needed to take this little bunny too and put him on separately because he was too big. You can see I wrapped his uh, ears around on the sides here. So we'll see how this one finishes out. For this other frame I am going to use this as the background and I think I'm going to cut a shape out of this part of this scrapbook paper and put a, a little shape on the front. As you can see this paper is larger than my frame across wise and lengthwise. So this will be a good size to cover the whole frame and we will do that in a bit. The first step for decoupaging the frame will be to color the edges and the inside rim of the frame if you desire. I like to do this so that it looks a little bit more finished. You could also use paint on the sides and the inside rim if you would prefer. I have been using a Sharpie marker because I found that it seems to do it quickly and easily. To color the edges with the Sharpie marker just open your Sharpie and then start to run it along the edges to get the look that you would like. So that's one side completed. I'll continue to put the Sharpie around the rest of the edges and be back shortly. Okay, so now I finished painting the edges with the Sharpie marker. What I like to do at this point is to actually put the Mod Podge on the Sharpie marker before I start putting the rest on because I found that sometimes the Sharpie marker will bleed a little bit into the Mod Podge and then I don't want to end up putting that onto the main part and over top of my actual paper. So I'm taking the Mod Podge and using my foam brush and I'm going to paint the Mod Podge around the outside and let that dry a little bit. 
if you get some on the front, that's fine. You can just uh, paint it off at you know, smooth it out at this time. And don't forget to paint the inside rim too, since you did that. After this is done, I use paper towels and I uh, wipe off my brush to make sure that I don't have, I won't have purple on my brush. Be sure to wipe off any excess also. Okay, so the glue, the Mod Podge that I put on the outside edge and the inside edge here has pretty much dried. So I can continue to the next steps. For this frame, I plan to put this egg patterned scrapbook paper across the whole entire frame. To do this, we want to take the scrapbook paper and put it face down on a piece of cardboard. The cardboard is used for cutting to protect your tape. I then will lay my frame over top and I will align the two edges. Like that. So you can see I align that edge and that edge. I'm going to then take my pencil and draw a line around the other two edges. I want to have the frame actually face down for this. So I'm turning the frame over. The, those two edges will still be the same, but I also want to cut out the middle part. So I'm going to cut out the middle part using the X-Acto knife and going along the edge. You can also trace around with your pencil and then cut it out. Okay, for the outside edge, I'll use my ruler and put that on there, aligned with the line that I marked and then use the exacto knife again to make a cut and then cut a little bit off the edge off the corner I'm done cutting for now put aside the mat and then I'm going to turn the frame to the front so the back side is down Oh, and I want to make sure that my frame, the hole for my frame is on the bottom here. So I have the frame facing upright in the correct direction. So we can make sure that we put the paper on in the correct, in the correct orientation. So my next step is to take some Mod Podge and we'll paint it across the whole front of the frame in an even layer. You don't want any goopy spots. Carefully take your cutout piece and align it. It's pretty hard to move after you've put it down so you want to get it pretty close. So I tend to align it from the middle. and then on out. Carefully smooth it out. You can use your hands like I am. Make sure your hands are not sticky or wet when you're doing this. Or you can use a, um, a card to smooth to try to get all the bumps out. Or some kind of flat surface. So like even this that I took from inside can help to smooth out any bubbles that were in there. Along the inside edge I want to kind of push the paper into the center 
so around the edge where it hang, hangs over a little bit because we want that to end up on the inside not sticking up. If, if you have a little bit of overhang around the outside edge also you want to fold that in and on the corners try to fold that to the to the side. I have a little little bit of a crease there and that'll mostly blend in once you put the Mod Podge on in a couple layers. So the next step is to now start painting Mod Podge across the entire frame in even layers. I also Mod Podge to the inside edge again and the outside edge. Put on a generous amount of Mod Podge but evenly. You may see some edges popping up. Make sure you glue them down with the Mod Podge. And if any bubbles appear, I can smooth them out with my finger or on these corners I can um, put some extra Mod Podge and press it down and around the corner and make sure that the paper stays down. Sometimes it takes some working to get it to stay down. Like on this side I have quite a bit of overlap that's going to wrap around the side. So I want to put a good amount of Mod Podge there. Make sure when you're using your fingers, the finger, your fingers aren't too sticky. Smooth it out and work it until the sides stay wrapped around the edge. And then Mod Podge over top again to seal it down. Be sure not to put your sticky fingers onto the top of the frame because sometimes they will stick and you could end up pulling up some of the paper when you pull your finger off so be very careful. Once you get a good layer on there then you want to leave it dry at least so that it's mostly dry and not real tacky. After that, I'll come back and put another layer on. So similar to this one, I already had a couple layers on here and they have dried. And I want to put another layer on this to see if it helps blend in the, the little cuts where I piece this together. Because this one I had to piece it together to get this contigu contiguous border all the way around the outside. So we'll see if after I put a couple more layers on here if those little edges maybe start to blend in a little bit more. So this is pretty dry now. It doesn't take very long, maybe half an hour or so to get each layer dried. You might have a little bit extra drying to do. So I found this Easter egg uh, coloring sheet on firstpalette.com and I'll include a link to this on the page I described earlier on our website. I'm going to use this as a template for the egg to cut out the other paper that I want to use. So first I'm going to cut this egg out I want to cut this out on the this paper. So I'm going to pick up area of this paper that I want to cut out and then I can trace on here. You can trace around this template so I know where to cut. and then cut out the shape 
from your scrapbook paper. Make sure none of your tracing line is showing on here. So what I would like to do is I'm going to try to decoupage this just in the corner there. This is totally optional. You can either decoupage, I mean it could be a completely solid color um, or it could be something that you decorated by hand or you can just leave the frame as is. So to decoupage something else onto the frame like I did this bunny or I want to do this egg put some decoupage onto the area where you want to place the item and then put your piece on top. Smooth it out nicely and then decoupage over top of the whole thing again just like you did before. We'll let that dry and see how it came out. Well as you can see our, my two frames are finished now. If you look closely at this one you can still see the lines where I piece the paper together on here. So in the future I think I would use just a full sheet of paper and then just play, place things on top. So I think that that the lines are still pretty prevalent on this and I don't like it quite as much as this one where I use one full sheet of paper and then I put an accent on here. So this one kind of blends in a little bit because the background is so busy and then this is kind of busy so it probably would have been better to use something that was more solid either here or something that was less busy in the background. But I still like how these frames turned out. I think they would make very cute frames to put kids Easter picture into and or other pictures from Easter egg hunts or whatever. The last the one step you have is this these frames come with this little dowel that hold, can hold it up so that they will stand. I hope you enjoyed this project today and that you make some Easter frames for yourself. These decoupage frames are easy to make and fun. And it's not as messy as you would think using the Mod Podge. Please visit our website needlepointers.com for lots of other craft tutorials. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or, and or Pinterest. We pin lots of projects on Pinterest, so you can find many of our projects there. <music>